Hey, hey, hey. Time for another out of this world story from our space. Not all that glitters is gold. Sometimes people have their eye on the wrong prize. Today on our space, a mother is looking for riches in all the wrong places. Caught my wife cheating with a secret social media profile, served her divorce, and took custody of my son. Hello everyone. I, 39 male, work as a receptionist in a hotel and I'm married to my wife Jessica, 34 female, who is a nurse in a hospital. We've been married for 12 years and have a 10-year-old son. Our married life was simple and normal, just like every normal person has. Though financially we suffered a lot and had great difficulty meeting the ends, somehow, we managed to do it. Jessica was a great partner and mother, she is a hard-working woman and took half of the responsibility which made it less difficult for both of us. I didn't make much money as a receptionist. So, I had to do extra work in the food hub. So we were hardly present at the same time, but we cherished weekends a lot. Our son, Robert, used to spend his daytime with his grandparents, and in the evening would both take him home at nine usually, but sometimes during Jessica's overnight stay, Robert stays the night at his grandparents. Our marriage was going smoothly, and things were just normal, but the mixture of peace and stress. However, I was grateful to have a partner like Jessica who never left my side in times of adversity and helped me through. We both were absent parents and that really made me feel sad, but at the end of the day, it was for our own good. But things got weird and took a bad turn on the day she came back from her friend's wedding. It wasn't just a normal wedding, but a luxurious five-day event. I was also invited to the wedding, but due to my workload, I refused to go and stayed back. I also skipped it so I could save money. After she came back from the wedding, she was unusually quiet. I asked her if she was fine and she got irritated by me. So I let her settle in the comfort space and gave her time. However, it started to trouble me more when she turned cold toward me. Not only did she become quiet, but she became irritated at me, but she was not telling me at all what was bothering her. After a week, she finally burst out of her frustration. At the dinner table, I casually asked her which movie she wanted to see tonight. Initially, she ignored me and then got agitated at me for asking her such questions. I asked her what was wrong. And she told me that she regretted marrying me, and that all her friends were having their dream lies, but as for her, she was suffering, and I was not doing much as a man. I failed to provide her with the life she wanted. Instead of watching movies at home, when will I take her to the theater? There was a lot more which she said and stood up from the table, leaving the half-finished plate on a table. I stayed silent because I saw it coming. One day, she was going to snap at me, and it wasn't her fault for having such wishes. I decided to apply for jobs and interview more and more. The next day, she didn't come home in her usual time as she said she had extra hours at the hospital. I and Robert waited for her, but it got late, so I talked to him in bed. After a while, I slept too, and Jessica came back at 4 in the morning. I asked her to come and sleep next to me, and I would take care of the housework. I wrapped my arms around her waist and tried initiating sex, but she got irritated and asked me not to touch her. Obviously, I respect her consent, but the way she snapped at me made me feel like she was disgusted by me. But somehow managed to keep my thoughts calm and went back to sleep. The next day was Sunday. In the morning, I called her for breakfast, and she came down looking irritated. I asked what was wrong, and she told me she wanted to buy herself a set of lingerie, and she wanted my card. In that situation, I couldn't say no to her, so I gave it to her. The card had money that I was saving up for Robert, and I felt quite uneasy. I asked her if she could wait a week until my salary came, then buy it instead of using my card. She threw my card on the table and asked me to keep it calling me stingy that I even refused to buy her basic things. I held her wrist and apologized millions of times to make her accept the card again. She took the card, kissed my cheeks to say thank you, and left. Her phone was on the table and it started buzzing. I took her phone and saw the text registration of some social media applications. I was going to open the phone, but Jessica came down and I put the phone down on the table immediately. She took her phone and went outside. After a while, I took Robert to his grandparents and on my way, I got a message from the bank about the debited money. It was $1,200. I stopped my car and my hands were on my head, thinking how crazy Jessica had been acting. I dropped off my son, called Jessica, and asked her to come back home. She came back home and asked her about the stuff she bought for $1,200 and how could she spend such a huge amount of money in just one go. I had been saving it for the family, obviously. She kept listening, started drying, and kept blaming me, saying that I ruined her life and that I couldn't even fulfill her basic wishes. All her friends are living luxurious lives. It's just me living at rock bottom. I told her she was acting crazy and greedy, and she knew my financial condition before marrying me. I did my best and I'm still doing it, and she shouldn't blame me for that. I told her that everything was fine a few months ago, but what's wrong now? Why was she acting like that suddenly? I don't know what happened to her. 
She sat in front of me with those guilt eyes and apologized to me for acting like that. She told me that on her friend's wedding day, all her friends were wearing branded clothes and carrying luxurious bags and accessories. The friends kind of embarrassed her and asked her if her husband wasn't doing enough for her. I felt bad for her and forgave her. A lot that, I asked her to understand that not everyone can afford the same lifestyle, and we both were trying our best to resolve the situation, so she shouldn't make herself feel embarrassed. Instead, she should feel great that she was an independent woman. She hugged me and we got intimate after so many days. I was happy and satisfied with the ups and downs because that's what makes the relationship more transparent and worth it. But soon, it went down again. Again, her phone started buzzing with her text messages from some app. But from the lock screen, I wasn't able to see which app it was. I was going to open the phone, but the password was incorrect. At first, I didn't mind and asked her for the password and told her about the text. She didn't give me any details or her password, and she casually took her phone and left the room. After Jessica fell asleep, I took the phone from her side and tried entering the password, but it failed again. I was annoyed and tried processing my thoughts as to why she had changed her password. As soon as I put her phone back, it's her buzzing again with a series of notifications. It was troubling. In the morning, I went back to work and dropped her off. Yesterday was our wedding anniversary, and I didn't remember but pretended to be obvious as I prepared a surprise for her. After dropping her off at the hospital, I went back to my place and set it up beautifully with warm lights and lilies. Robert was going to stay at his grandparents the night. I was so excited and happy while preparing her favorite meals. After placing everything nicely, the door opened, and Jessica walked in. Her tired face changed into happiness as soon as she saw the house set up romantically. She ran toward me and hugged me tightly. We had a great time together, and finally, we sat down to talk. She told me that she loved the efforts I had put in, but if we had money, we could go to a fancy restaurant. She also started telling me about her friend, whose husband gifted her a diamond ring. I started to feel insecure and realized that she didn't like what I did to make her happy, and she was not satisfied at all. I listened to her quietly faking a smile. I didn't want to fight with her on my anniversary. To distract her, I started clicking pictures of us, but as soon as I was going to upload those, she asked me not to post these pictures as her house and everything looked cheap, and she didn't want her friends to see them. She was so harsh and made everything seem worthless. The food and the flowers were worth nothing in front of her greedy eyes. Jessica was from a well-to-do family, but she was never greedy, or maybe she never showed that to me. She knew about my humble earnings, and she never complained about it. But suddenly, she's become so materialistic. I was still not able to process my thoughts. She went inside the bedroom and called me after a few minutes. She was wearing red lingerie and looked extremely ravishing. I went towards her and started kissing her, but she stopped and asked me to click a few pictures of hers. We had fun, and the rest of the time went fun. In the morning, I got a call from Rumber's school and I immediately drove off. After reaching the school, the teacher told me that he got into a fight. I asked Rumber what was wrong that he punched his friend. He told me that his friend James was making fun of mom, and he was telling everyone that mom got fired from the hospital. James's mother was also the nurse in the same hospital as Jessica. I didn't want to believe what I heard, maybe it was just a rumor. If it really happened, why didn't she tell me? I left for my work after that, but I just was not able to process all the changes going on in my life. I sense something was wrong with Jessica, there's something she's hiding. I'm not doubting her outrightly that she's cheating on me, but she's definitely up to something. Well, I don't doubt that she bought lingerie, but it definitely wasn't for you. And as for her frivolous spending, that's just as bad as cheating. Not only that, but it's unfair of her to be comparing your relationship and your means to other friends and what their lives look like. Moreover, the fact that she was fired and didn't tell you speaks volumes. I mean, if she can't tell you that, what else isn't she telling you? Update 1 Hi everyone, it's been a week since my last update and I was dealing with many issues and finally decided to divorce Jessica after knowing the truth. After hearing the rumor from Robert, I could not sleep for days and decided to find the truth. Today morning, I just drove off to the hospital. I asked the receptionist to call Jessica, introducing myself as her husband. The receptionist looked at me and then shared looks with the other lady on the counter. The receptionist told me that Jessica no longer worked there. I asked her since when. She said a month ago. I asked her the reason, but she didn't tell me. Her looks suggested that she knew and it was pretty bad, but she didn't tell me. I was coming out of the hospital, confused and angry. I was wondering if she was fired, then where was she working these days? And from where was she getting money? As I was about to get in the car, James's mother waved at me to stop. She apologized for James's behavior and how she shouldn't have talked about such things in front of her son. I nodded and said not to worry. She said she had something I needed to know. I knew what it was. She told me that after Jessica came back from her leave, the wedding leave, she started feeling very insecure and sad about her life, and the only thing she talked about was money. 
she took Jessica's cribbings to be normal stuff, as we all feel like that sometimes. But that didn't stop there. Jessica created an adult profile on social media. I was shocked that I felt numb. She said that Jessica got fired because she was caught making obscene videos and clicking naked pictures in the storeroom of the hospital. One of the janitors saw it and made videos of it and leaked it to every staff, and that's how everyone got to know. I asked her for the name of the social media app, and she gave me her number and told me that she would send me an account link of Jessica's profile. She asked me to stop Jessica, but I would create problems for Robert in his school. I requested her not to discuss all this in front of James, as that would further create problems for him. She agreed. I felt so disgusted after hearing this that I wanted to throw up, and ever in my life have I felt so worthless, and I blamed myself for everything she was doing. It was because I failed to provide. I for crying my heart out inside my car, I did it to gather all the evidence by myself, and then confront Jessica because she was going to feed me lies on lies. While I was driving back, I remembered that a few days back, I was scrolling down my social media and saw a new profile on my suggestion. In the profile picture, there was a woman who was wearing red lingerie, but her face was hidden. I don't know why her back resembled that of Jessica's. I clicked on it, but it took me to an 18-plus website for adult entertainment. I took that to be another promotion gimmick of an adult dating app and I ignored it. Now I realize that the social media app shows you suggestions if the person is in your contact list. That woman was definitely Jessica. The dots started to connect, and I felt uneasy and anxious. In the evening, when I reached home, I found several packages on the couch. Dresses, deals, bags, and whatnot lying around that were just bought out of the store. I took out the bill from the sofa and couldn't breathe for a moment after seeing that she bought $900 lipstick. Jizuki came out of the room and looked scared and see me. I showed her the bill and asked her where does she get all the money. She threw the stuff from her hand on the floor and told me that she regrets marrying me and that she feels confined inside the walls of poverty. She wanted a few things for herself and she got it. What's such a big deal about it? She was like, why does my life always have to be about our son in this house? Why can't I spend my savings on something I love? A harmless laughed at her manipulative tactics, but pretended not to know the truth. I took a deep breath and again asked her, where did she get all the money? She looked at me and told her that she got promoted to a different healthcare center, and it paid her a good amount. I nodded and went outside for a walk. James's mother texted me Jessica's adult account details, and without even opening the account, I knew it was Jessica. I put my hands in my face and didn't have the courage to open it and see for myself, but the anger and the insults she put me through today were humiliating, only to realize that she sold her body of the public for materials and ruined our 13 years of marriage. I searched the username and it showed the exact same account I had on suggestions a few days ago. I made a new account, created a whole fake profile, and did everything that was needed. I found her account, but to see her content, I had to subscribe, and it cost $200. I paid that amount, a big amount for me but a small amount to pay to save myself from daily humiliation. The profile said, your personal nurse, and after taking this obstruction, the account finally opened. My palms were sweaty, my mouth felt better and I almost threw up when I saw those pictures. Those pictures and videos were scary, but the comments were terrifying. Half of the stuff was hidden, and the cost such high rates. Not only this, but she also posted the pictures I clicked on the day of her anniversary. The same pictures now looked disgusting to me. The comments were outrageous, and I couldn't look at that anymore, more like I couldn't look at her anymore, and immediately thought of divorce. There was no time to delay that. So I called my brother and asked him to help me prepare the divorce paper. He worked for an attorney. When I came back home, she wasn't there. She left the note, leaving for night shift. The fun part is she's jobless. I don't want to spell this out, but God, I know what kind of night shift she's into. I don't think I'll be able to sleep until I confront her and humiliate her the way she insulted me. And for that, I didn't have to do anything because she did it herself. I'm so sorry, OP. You're right to seek divorce. At this point, she's a lost cause. I think the worst part is, she's more interested in making money for herself than to create a good and happy life for your child. I mean, yes, it's important a mother treats herself every now and again. But your wife has seemed to lose sight of what's important. Not only that, but you're out 200 bucks. Update 2 It's been a while since the last update, as I was dealing with severe trauma and the divorce process was harder to process. So the next morning, after my last update, I woke up to Jessica's yelling at Robert, asking him to stay the F away from her expensive things. It was barely messing around with the expensive stuff she bought last night. This brought anger down my body. I asked Robert to go inside his room. I gave her a cold stare and asked her again where she got this much money. She put her phone aside and asked me if I had lost my hearing ability. I laughed at her comment and told her that at least 
I didn't lose respect for myself the way she did. She looked completely oblivious and asked me what I was talking about. I told her to continue with the your personal nurse business and that the divorce papers wouldn't reach her soon. She understood where I was coming from. It was her username on the adult website. She sat on the sofa and felt ashamed. I told her not to feel ashamed or regret this after getting caught because it was her own choice. She started crying and saying that she couldn't take all the insults she went through in front of her friends and cousins and they shut off all their luxurious things and she was leading a mediocre lifestyle. So she took that path and bought herself the expensive stuff. I yelled at her that a modest lifestyle is much better than showing your naked bite at the world and if she still wanted to pursue that, she should have told me. I know it's her body and her choice, BS, but she need not keep me in the dark and would have done that openly. I told her that I knew why she got fired from the hospital and that my innocent boy had to suffer the bullies in his school because of her fantasy and greed. Her body language suggested she had no remorse. If only she was going to continue doing this after her divorce, and every tear was just an act of being caught and not guilty of what she had been doing. She said we could figure out a middle ground, and I couldn't take our son away from her. I told her that was impossible to spend my life with someone who could show her nudity and nakedness in front of the whole world just for the sake of easy money. I know she didn't care about our son at all. I asked her if she had any idea how humiliating it was going to be for Robert when he got to know from his friends or people around him that his mother sold her nudes for a living. Have you thought of the consequences we are going to face because of your greed? She remained silent and then started arguing, saying that it was partially my fault and that she had no choice. I told her she clearly had a choice and she chose to be a whore instead of being broke. Her face disgusted me and I left the house with Robert for my parents. I over time as many jobs as I could for her or my son and still she was an ungrateful, disgusting, immoral witch and I could never accept such a person back in my life. I've been living with my parents for the last one week. Jessica didn't try to contact me or our son. Roar's paper is supposed to come in the next few days and I want this to be over as soon as possible. Oh wow. So she's suddenly interested in this son that she didn't seem to care about before? I'm glad you got you and Robert out of there. I don't believe her tears were sincere at all. She could care less. All she cares about is her expensive lipsticks. None of this was your fault, OP. None of it. Update 3 Hello, everybody. I finally got rid of my ex-wife from my life. Phew! It took days for the divorce papers to reach her. During the divorce process, Jessica and her parents filed a case against me for complete custody of Robert. I'd almost lost the case. They made me look poor and unavailable father, who never did anything for my son. Like I said, her parents were well off, and they claimed that I won't be able to provide a good life for Robert. And that's when I made them ask her about her job and if she is a suitable guardian for a 10-year-old. Obviously, I cannot leave the custody of my son to Jessica's parents. I told the judges and showed the proof of her immoral acts and how her reputation will take a toll on Robert's mental health and social value. I don't want my son to go through bullying. And that's how I got the complete custody of him. Robert himself was not attached to his mother, but I did allow her to meet him whenever she wanted. Jessica's parents and her siblings blamed me for her actions. They said that she chose that path because I couldn't give her the life she deserved. They never wanted Jessica to marry me, and this whole scenario gave them another opportunity to make fun of me. The choke is on them, actually, if they really can see. Anyway, I'm gonna give a crack about anyone now. I'm just happy to have a peaceful life with my son. I lost a fortune going through this, but it was worth it. As for her, I heard she's still on that adult site, selling her news to make money. Thankfully, I didn't forgive her and dodged a bullet. I can't even believe people chose to side with her when you've been the one taking care of Robert for God knows when. On top of that, she definitely doesn't have Robert's best interests at heart. From the sounds of it, she's just interested in making money so she can spend money and fit in with her rich friends. If she wants to send nudes, go right ahead. Her business is her business, but she can't have her cake and eat it too. If she wanted a lavish life, she should have looked somewhere else. Not all life's riches are materialistic. The richest person can have the least money in the bank, but the warmest, lowest loved heart. What do you make of all this? Thank you for joining us today. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. See you next time on Our Space.